มโนปบังกามาธรรมามโนเสธธาตุมโนเมียฟนามนะ or preceded by the mind, excelled by the mind, made by the mind. The people put that first in the Dhammapada, knew what they were doing, because it expresses the principle that holds all the way through the practice. The mind comes first, the heart comes first. We live in the world where we have to put a lot of energy in. It's through the energy the mind puts in that we reap the results, good or bad, depending on the energy. To begin with, this is a refutation of the principle of materialism, which is that the mind is just an epiphenomenon of material processes. In other words, it's the result. It's on the far end of the causal spectrum. The real causes are material, and somehow matter happens to be aware. But the matter is doing all the acting. That's the material hypothesis. The Buddha is saying the opposite. It's the mind that's doing the acting. And all the physical processes may have their laws. Their laws are malleable. And you can learn how to shape your experience through your intentions, which is why we're sitting here meditating. We're not dosing the body with chemicals to create a state of mind. We're changing the mind from within, starting with our desire to escape suffering, and then trying to take that desire seriously and working on it well, and realizing a lot of it. The issue has to do with what we're putting into the system. Which means as you begin the practice and you see other people are having an easier time than you are, well, they put some good things someplace in the past into the system. This applies not only to the practice, but everything in life. We see people having a really easy time. It seems like they don't have to put much energy in and they get a lot of results back. But you can't resent them. You can't be jealous of them. They put the energy in at some time in the past. And the fact that they're lazy now is a sign that they're going back to the old consuming mode. And when they're careful to eat up all of their merit, eat up all of the goodness they put in the system, and then they'll be back at square one. So if you're facing difficulties in the practice, just remind yourself, well, you must have some karma. You may have put some bad things into the system in the past. But here you have the opportunity to put nothing but good things in, because that's what the practice is all about, taking our input into the system and making it a gift, it starts with generosity. This is why the Buddha starts his teaching with generosity, because it's pointing to the fact that it's what you put into the system that's going to make a difference. So it starts with something really simple, really basic, moves on to virtue, and again, he has you regard virtue as a gift. It's a gift of safety. He says, if you're going to make your virtue universal, then you have a share in that universal safety. You will get some goodness back. But what's important is what you put in. And then the principle applies to the meditation. Some people come and say, well, prove to me first that this is going to work and then I'm going to do it. But there's nothing on earth where they can prove things to you before they, that you've done them. Or if they tell you they can, you have to wonder about how honest they are. The Buddha is upfront about the fact this is going to require work. There are certain of his teachings that he says he can't prove to you. Aside from giving a pragmatic proof that if you take his teachings, say on karma and rebirth, as working hypotheses, you're going to be putting better things into the system. Because you realize that your actions will have consequences. 
And you think about the images of that first burst of the Dhammapada. If you've been putting bad thoughts, bad deeds, bad words into the system, it's like having to carry a cart, drag a cart behind you, and the wheels of the cart are going to crush the footprints you leave behind. In other words, whatever good you try to do is going to get crushed by the bad things you've done. Whereas if you put good things into the system, it's like having a shadow that follows you. The shadow has no weight at all. There's no burden on you to walk along with a shadow. And it's even better than a shadow in the sense that it provides you with protection. So it really does matter what you put in. It requires energy. And this is one of the reasons why we develop these strengths. Strength of conviction, strength of persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. We find the sources of these strengths within. I mean, we hear the Buddhist teachings, they make sense, but it's up to us to make that movement of the heart, which is conviction. We have to give our assent, take on these principles as working hypotheses and then put forth our effort. Think of what the Buddha said when he said, The doors to the deathless are open. Let those with ears show forth their conviction. You have to put energy in. You have to make the gift of conviction if this is going to work. The same with persistence, the effort you put in. This is one of the reasons why the Taijans don't explain everything. And John Fu made that comment that if you practice, you have to think like a thief. The Ajahn isn't going to explain everything. So when he does things that you're not understanding, you have to ask yourself, well, what could be his reasons for that? And then you have to put your energy into figuring things out. Because after all, that's how you have to approach the meditation. You can get the most detailed instructions as possible on meditation, and still they wouldn't be detailed enough. And John Lee made this comment. He could write a huge treatise on meditation, and still wouldn't cover all of the ins and outs of the mind. So the parts that aren't covered in the instructions, you have to figure out, how do I imply the basic principles and instructions, and which principles do I apply? You've got to be willing to put some energy in, try to figure this out, experiment. So the model of the teaching and learning experience here is that ideally the student should want to learn and be willing to put forth effort. And that's how you learn how to figure things out. Same with mindfulness, concentration, discernment. It's all what you put into it that makes a difference. With a discernment, you have to ask questions. Your mind gets into concentration, things are very still and very pleasant, and you can just sit there. But as John Mahabua says, it's like getting all the raw materials for a house gathered together, and then you just sit on the, on the raw materials. You don't get the house. You have to ask, what's this for? What's that for? Why does the mind do this? Why does the mind do that? Think of the Buddha in his quest for awakening. He tried out various things. It wasn't that he would go to a teacher and say, hand me your attainment. He said, you know, teach me what you've got to teach, and I'll go and put it into practice. Then we put it into practice, he discovered it didn't work. He tried his best, and as he said, he put forth conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. Then when he had given what he could, he realized, okay, this was not going to lead him any further than, say, a state of concentration. Then he moved on. They asked himself, well, what else could there be? What other path could there be? What else can I do? Now is how he gained 
ultimately the discernment as to what the path was and how to follow it, and he gained the results. In gaining the results, he had learned a lot about the mind. He saw that it's what we bring to our sensory experience that's going to make all the difference. We look at dependent core arising. The big factors are there prior to sensory contact. Fabrication, name and form, the intentions, the acts of attention, the perceptions, the feelings, even the way you breathe. This is what you bring to sensory contact, and what you bring is going to make the difference between whether it's going to be a cause for suffering or part of the path to the end of suffering. So this principle of the mind comes first. It goes all the way from just the simple act of giving something, putting some food in a monk's bowl, say, or giving your time, giving of your knowledge all the way to the giving back in the Third Noble Truth, Jago Bhattini Sago. Giving up, giving back, all those things you've laid claim to as yours. When the path has completed its work, you give everything back. This is an image you see throughout the forced John's teachings. You realize because you've laid claim to things that really weren't yours, and you finally surrender them, and you give them their freedom. That's the muti and the Third Noble Truth. So it's giving from the very beginning to the very end, because when you do this properly, then there's total release. And that's the point where you can Stop the giving. Because you're no longer needing to take anything. So think of that statement that Mumbudun said that the things of the world come in pairs. There's the giving and the taking. But the Dharma is one thing clear through. Giving all the way. And the various strengths we develop are there to help us keep on giving, and not to get resentful when we see other people are going faster than we are and have something we have, something that we don't have. Because it's not what you get out of life that's going to be important; it's what you give. And the Buddha is giving you lessons in how to give in a way we don't have to give for a while and then get worn out by giving, and then just take, 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 take what you can, because that pulls you back down. He's showing how to keep on giving, how to sustain this attitude through the strength of your conviction and persistence, gaining the nourishment from your concentration. And to find you can give everything up. And then that's the biggest reward. So try to maintain this attitude that you're willing to give. You have the desire to learn, so you're going to give the energy that's needed to learn. And then you try to depend on these strengths, develop these strengths, to carry you all the way through. 